Hey everybody, it's me, Todd, here at AO5 Gallery in Austin, Texas, and I am joined by the hard to get a hold of, uh, to get in your galleries, Miss Sharon Spiller, and I'll tell that story in a minute. Um, hi Sharon, how are you doing? Hi, nice to meet you guys. <laughs> so good to see you again. Um, she, when she says you guys, uh, Camille's here, of course, behind the horn, making sure that I don't make incredibly stupid mistakes. Okay, I wanna jump right into your work. Had a really cool background set up behind me, and um, uh, somebody came in and bought your painting like yesterday or day before yesterday, and they messed up my whole um, background. So <laughs> you're a popular artist, which is what gets me to my first question. But before I get to the first question, I know I talk too much, but I'm very excited to see you. I followed you around art shows for about two years, saying, I want you in the gallery. And you're like, well, I don't really need galleries because I do these art shows. And then I bought you a couple beers, and then finally you said yes. <laughs> that you would bring me stuff to the gallery. And it's been a really successful time in the gallery. So um, let's talk about how long you've been painting, why you haven't done galleries. And um, I'll get into part three of that question in a minute. So how long and then why not galleries? All right, I started painting when I was in college, but I never did it professionally. Then I stopped when my dad passed away, had my kids. And then in 2004, I started painting again when my kids were toddlers and then it just, went crazy from there. I, yeah, I decided to go do my first art show and I was like, oh my gosh, I can make a really good living at this. I love meeting my, my clients and I love meeting people that like to talk about their work. So I've been professional since 2004. Um, most of my staff, you know, I've always done art shows because I like to meet the people. And it really is because of you that I'm like, okay, let's go check out this gallery thing. And it has been fabulous. I, I, was, I remember telling you, it was like, I made a mistake. I should have said yes as soon as you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like drinking beer with you. And, and what's but, yeah, funny that's is the day you said yes to me after I'd seen you at like four or five art shows, a friend of mine who used to collect art from when I ran a gallery in Houston, a friend of mine was buying a painting of yours when I was bringing you a second beer. It was the strangest thing. And then next thing you know, you're like, whatever's not, whatever's still here, I'm going to send to your gallery. And it's, I, I mean, You've been a really popular artist since you've been here, too. Thank you. And I've had a blast. I can't wait to send you guys more. I know. I can't wait to hang it up because I had a really, like I said, I had a really cool background set. And this, this, this couple came in and bought um, a painting. Like, serious, like, I texted you. I said, hey, <laughs> just sold this painting that was in my background. But I'll show people what's left. But anyway, so um, it's amazing what you said about kind of the cathartic journey of painted, stopped, passing of a of loved one, father, kids, um, and then two, you know, 16 years ago, uh, you realized that here's this thing. So how did you decide to do the style you do? And we'll get into what it is later. It's harder to see in the backgrounds, but you, you have a style that I hadn't seen before, and that's why I had to have you in the gallery. Yeah, you, you met me when I was just doing paintings, and so you were used to my, you know, which are right behind you. And it was just a lot of, you know, just playing around. I've always been very geometric. Um, I went to school for chemical engineering, which I know sounds crazy. So I actually no, my love family did. So I love math. And it's funny because other engineers will see it and they're like, oh, I totally get it. And other people's like, I, I don't see it. But anybody that's really math oriented starts seeing it. It's so like the shapes and the, you know. So that's where I went with my, my, my paintings. And it just... I don't know, it was so bright and happy. I was like, it has to have a shine on it. It has to have resin. So it's just like, it just makes, I want it to make it feel like candy and that you just want to touch it. Not what I just sold? Yeah. Was it? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I just sold. <laughs> That's in my mixed media. So, and, and then the mixed media, the mixed media um, is something I've been thinking about for years because I wanted something, because when you're doing paintings, you get closer to it, you kind of lose you know, you get really close to a painting and it starts kind of, you know, getting blended together and then you step back and you're like, oh, I see it. So I wanted it to across with a mixed media that from far away, you're like, oh my God, this is an amazing piece. And then you get closer and you're like, oh my gosh, there's a little stamp in it. She has a number in it. She's done all this stuff. And then you go back out and you don't see it again. And so that's, I've been having so much fun doing both bodies of work because it's just kind of a different play with your mind when you look at them. Um, there's a painting I didn't even realize, and I'll show it after you answer the next question, because I'm going to move the camera. Okay. But there's a painting I didn't even realize has a symbol on it that is as big as the painting. I was so busy looking at 
the stamps and the letters and the, the ephemera. So go deeper into why did you start choosing the ephemera you chose? I mean, you've got the, the coolest stuff hidden in your, in your work. And I've got artists that repurpose like John Morse, you know, um, you've got repurposing that's, you almost have to look for it, but when you see it, it's there. What, what was the, what was the impetus for that? Well, some of it actually is my, my own writing. So like, if you see a rabbit go through it, it's something I, I, I was a little tipsy in a, in a hotel room one night and was drawing this stupid little rabbit with a stupid little saying. And it was about, you know, a stupid boy, unfortunately. But now it became me because after I was like, I want to be single. I don't want to ever date anybody for long term again. So I became the rabbit. And then the funny thing is, then I met this guy that it's like, he caught the rabbit. So you'll see the rabbit come through because it's kind of a lot of people can like, they can see that one. They think it's funny. And then they're like, oh yeah, I'd never fall in love with a rabbit because they run. So that's in a lot of them. Uh, the stamps, I'm purposely doing stamps from not the United States. There you go. And then the stamps are, um, I, I tried, I did them because I'm so used to painting. I painted for years on canvas. Then when you switch to wood, I was used to the 12 pound cotton duck and my paintbrush and my paint wasn't clicking. So I started using the stamp so it would catch my paint. Then it became a whole big thing. And then like, um, I think the one right behind you, I know the one behind me had um, architecture plans from the St. Louis, uh, uh, from the uh, prison, which cracks me up. I love so, it. Yeah, so I purposely will choose things that have a meaning. Okay, so things that have a meaning go in the painting. So this one that's behind me, if you look at this painting behind me here, which is called Wayne, it's got tons of rabbits in it and you're writing it. But do you see, can, the, can you see what the symbol is there? I know you painted it. Oh, yeah. But. Yeah, it's a double helix because I love to play with the idea of DNA. Yeah, and what the heck? Here I have this, see, this is why I love artists like you, because you, you trick us. So um, I, I've looked at this painting a million times and didn't see the double helix. Um, and, you know, see, my sister-in-law is a chemical engineer. Okay. And okay. She, this is the kind of thing she'd appreciate. If she read the title and saw the art, she'd appreciate it. And, and, but also, like, my brother has a little different mindset in art where this is the kind of thing also my brother would dig, too. And I think that you've found uh, that balance between um, good for kind of this side of art collecting and this side of art collecting and the person people get married and they can agree on it it's cool it's yeah. just cool stuff so um you have been using a lot of reflective paint gold leaf how do you feel about seeing your work at night when the lights are out and you see it reflecting oh i think it's so cool that's that's really fun i am so sorry there's a cat <laughs> that's the second cat bomb of our interviews <laughs> no it's okay Gabe Leonard had a cat bomb too. It was really great. Like, okay. <laughs> scared the crap out of me. Because also there's this cat butt in my face. So your artwork, like like many of our other artists, like Isabel Dupuy, she uses a gold uh, reflective paint. So when the lights are out, you can kind of see it at night or it gets its cool reflection. A lot of your um, pieces that are behind me have that reflective quality. I see it at night when I close the galleries and the lights hit it. Um, yeah. Intentional, of course, I'm assuming. It's absolutely intentional because I don't care how well somebody's lit their, their house for, for art. And there's some really great lighting. When it gets really super dark outside, you're going to lose a little bit of the piece. But with that reflective thing, it just pops it back up and it gives it a whole different piece than you saw during the day, which is kind of exciting. It's like, oh, wait, look at that. So it yeah. kind of gives it to, you know, the whole different life of it in the evening. Before I knew you, like, I'd only met you at art shows a few times and by the time, I guess years later, you acquiesced to me and said, yes, okay, I'll do the gallery. Right. Um, I called you Sharon Spillar because I was yes, like, Sharon Spillar. And so I'm calling you Sharon Spillar. And so all the employees that are here are calling you Sharon Spillar, which sometimes they still do. And I'm on the phone with you or something, or you came to visit me and, and you're like, it's just Spiller. Like, it's Sharon Spiller time. Like, <laughs> never, I made yeah. you like, Sharon Spillar. <laughs> you, now, <laughs> I have artists that have actually change their names um not change it but um Cinda Valle, you know she's one of those artists that really had trouble identifying between you know um being valley or valle and i said especially in southern california and texas we're going to call you Cinda Valle, which is how she goes by but you, did you ever am i the only idiot that called you spill R, or has that happened before it happens all the time it happens it? all the time they misspell it i just i just find them like you know whatever just <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's fine. Okay, good. Because, correcting. 
I mean, I was making you all like oh, Sharon Spilar, and then you're and if people know you, you're one of the most down to earth artists. I mean, that's why I bought you beer at the shows. I was like, I wasn't just trying to butter you up. I actually liked you. And I we think were, I told you, know. you to go buy me beer. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. I always, I mean, you, but I think you hunted to me. I think it was five years before I finally said yes to you. God, but, I spent yeah. so much on these artists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, but it was so amazing to see an old collector of mine buying your work. That's when I was like, I have, I have good taste. So I, I know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. here's a collector of mine from 10 years ago buying Sharon's work. So speaking of your work, you, we talked about like these awesome pieces behind me that you resin, the paintings on canvas and you resin. And then later, you know, you do these abstract, but uh, uh, it's hard to describe your work because it's so different than what people do. Even though they're abstractions um, and this reclaimed stuff, there are things to see, the symbols, et cetera. Um, that are on wood, what have you not done that you want to do? Okay, what you do not know about and nobody knows about is okay. my, my kid's old music teacher. Because I used to be the PTO president, so basically I lived at the school and I knew the music teacher very well. He's moving to Fort Lauderdale and he has old pipe organs. So two days ago, we've socially distanced with our mask on, he dropped off all the old pipe organs. So I didn't know they also do wood pieces. So it's like big wood, the organ parts that I'm going to paint. So it's going to wow. be two dim three dimensional and then I'm going to paint around them. Wow. So is this a, a sharing project or is this the pieces that are going to go out to be sold? Well, this is a Sharon project. And if it turns out really cool, I, I, I don't know. I might send you a picture to show you what's going on. Because be. seriously, you could blow through part of it and it still gives a sound. Wow. Not I've never heard sound. this before. Yeah, I so have This no is why idea. I choose artists like you to be here because you do things I've never heard of. It's hard to do when I've been doing this over two decades. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, you know, I already know what I'm going to do with the wood. I don't know about the metal, but the wood is definitely going to be made into art. And I think I'm going to do my mixed media on it. Okay, all right. I'm excited. You have to show me pictures. Maybe before, maybe, have you started it yet? I haven't started it yet. I just have the pieces. Okay, so we'll stay tuned, folks. We'll definitely uh, show you what she does with that. I mean, I'm super stoked about that. That's right up my alley. Um, I want to talk about the series, one of the series that I fell in love with you with. If I can just move the camera and be so brave. This was the series that I saw from a distance. I don't know if my finger's pointing the right spot. They got me hooked on you. And this painting yeah, is called Dirt, and I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's my K-Pax series. K-Pax, that's right. K-Pax. I'm still in love with it. I'm still painting it because I have fun painting it. And I will paint a series until I'm just not having fun with it. I still love it. I, 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 I have some bases that I'm working on right now for those. Cool, because it's got an, it's got this it's echo quality to it. I hate I hate to use that word. It's almost like the Keith Haring guys that with the movement. You they have movement to them. It's but it's it's almost like zip 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 zoom. It's they're really cool, and that's what really caught my eye from you from afar. And then I started looking deeper into your work, and then of course when I saw your newest work at the time, uh, with the stamps and stuff in it, I just I knew that you were. You had to be a part, and that's why I bought you so many beers to get you to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bribery always works. Yeah, um, I, I just, I just find there's a maturity to your work, but there's a youthfulness. It's very worked, and and you know, clearly you've been doing it a long time. But there's a youth to it, and in, in the most, I mean that in the most positive way. By the oh, way, oh, I know you do. Yeah, yeah. Because I think you're a big kid like I am. I know, and I like to be happy. And I think when you look at my work, it makes you happy. It's like. Yeah, life's too short yeah. not to be happy. I, I mean, I, I, right, and I agree with you on that. The couple that just bought your piece like two days ago, you know, they, they just fell into the piece. And the more, look, some of these paintings I've had of yours for at least a year, and I look at, I find something new every time I look at your work. That's so hard to do. Do you find looking at your own work that you find stuff that you forgot that you did or something that surprised you, you didn't realize you did it? Because I know if I was you, I would. In the mixed media, sometimes I'll be showing it to somebody. I'm like, oh, oh, wait, there's a bus in there. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, I didn't know. Uh, yeah, got it. Like, I didn't, whereas, oh, yeah, whereas, there it is. <laughs> that's so great. Whereas John Morse, he can look back 10 years on his collage art, and he can go, uh, uh, Todd, there's an Eminem rapper right above George Washington's eyelash that I put. And he'll remember that because he's just nine months on the same piece. You know, he's, he's making right. up. You're doing this 
great abstraction where where you may be ripping stuff up and going that's the right piece and boom and also you're like oh wow that's that's in there because i keep finding new stuff in your work all the time like it's a john morris piece yeah yeah I, it, it's because it's when i'm doing the stamps i mean i'll pick out the stamps and i'll put them in a pile and then i put them on and then it has to dry and so then i'm not thinking about it until i'm starting to paint and i was like oh look that's where that that you know you know, I, you know, put the upside down Santa. He's sitting right there. I mean, I make sure we can see it because sometimes I'll hide the stamps, you know, so you'll see a, the texture of a stamp, but the stamp's not there. But if, in other words, they're purposely done. It's like, yes, I want that upside down Santa. Somebody's like, what? I didn't know he was there. So when people look at your work, they need to realize you're not just, you know, throwing spaghetti against the wall. Like you're planning no. out a meticulous canvas to paint on top of. Oh, yeah. I actually did a commission for somebody, a paste on a pair of Nike tennis shoes just recently seriously oh, cool. some sean witherspoon sean witherspoon nikes i had to go get them because i wanted to make sure i could color match part of it and then panic so my daughter's like oh those are like two thousand dollars now mom and i'm like it's sitting on my studio table <laughs> <laughs> with the cat yeah with the cat. So, yeah yeah so i quickly got it color matched and returned before there was any damage to the shoe that i didn't want to have to try to replace Sure, I don't blame you a bit. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I'm, I, literally, I'm down to one, two, three, four, five paintings, which usually I have a lot more of yours, and then I have the little series, which people should really pick up while they can, because they're, they're just so cool. We'll show, we'll show them on the video, but you've got more stuff to send me, right? I have more stuff to send you. Okay, good. I do. I do. Good, and, and you're in St. Louis now, is that correct? I am in St. Louis. Okay. Budweiser capital, right? Oh, I, yeah, I don't drink that beer, but yes, it is. <laughs> Clydesdales. <laughs> uh, Todd Talks, not sponsored by Budweiser. <laughs> well, there goes our sponsorship in St. Louis. It's a really cool town, and there's a new art thing thriving in St. Louis right now. Yes, there is, but I haven't done anything with it because I've been on the road so much. So, yeah, I, know. Um, I know. So, yeah. I've been trying to ease that pressure for you. <laughs> <laughs> by having you in here, babe. So, I know. Um, okay, so I'm fine with that. You, well, I, I know, I know. A lot of my artists are like, I don't want to be in a gallery. I've been doing art shows. And then the husband will call and go, I'm sick of doing these art shows. My wife, like, will you please take some art? It's, I mean, but I'm very blessed because, you know, I know the artists like you get a million of these art guys that come up and go, hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm so pleased that you guys say yes to me because, I mean, I really want to show you in the greatest light in the greatest gallery in Texas. Um, so, yeah. an honor that I have you and I really appreciate it. So, we're going to, um, as soon as I get them, we'll show your new work, of course, on our newsletter and Facebook and Instagram and all that. And say, say bye to your collectors and your future collectors, and then I'll sign us off. Well, it is so great to be on this. It was a lot of fun. Um, I know you're going to love going to the gallery because Todd's amazing. And I am so happy to, you know, be able to show you my work. And I hope you have fun doing it. And it was nice meeting you guys. Uh, I'm, I love it. I love having you on Todd Talks. Um, people have to realize... I we get 40 submissions of artists a week that want to be in this gallery. I had to fight for this girl. So please come to the gallery and look at her work because she's stunning and amazing. And she's hanging next to a bunch of my other favorites. I'm like, I, I just got the chills. Cause I just realized oh, that's why I got you. I bought you beer um, uh, and good and good beer. Ladies and gentlemen and others out there. Um, thank you so much. My name is Todd. I'm the gallery director here at A05 Gallery in Austin. And this has been an interview with Sharon Spiller, uh, one of our darlings here at the gallery that, it, Clearly, I can't keep on the walls. I had a whole different setup behind me before it started. So thank you, Sharon. Love you, gal. Love you guys.